What's up, students? I hope you're having the best day of your life today. Today, we're talking about speed versus velocity inside the unit of kinematics. We're going to give the definition, I spelled that wrong, definition of each, the similarities and differences between them, the variables and the units associated with speed velocity, their graphs, two examples using speed and velocity. This is going to be good for anybody taking the SAT physics exam, AP Physics 1, the New York State Regents exam, the home state that I teach in, or any basic high school or 101 level physics class. Let's get into this. So first we're going to start with speed. Now the basic definition of speed, which is okay, it's a, and we're not really going to help us too much, but is the distance an object moves per unit of time. Now we see that it's associated with distance, and from the last video we know that distance is a scalar quantity where the direction is not needed. The same holds true for speed. Speed is also a scalar quantity, and all that means is that no direction is associated. Right, it's only going to have a magnitude, an amount, a number, that's what the magnitude is, and a unit as well. Now its variable is given by the symbol V. Now what we're gonna see is there are many types of Vs that we're gonna see in this physics course. And I'm gonna name a couple of them just so we understand. We can say that the initial velocity is gonna be V naught, so that's this little circle and means naught, or we can just write VI. V final is written as just V, or the final. It does not matter which of these you use as long as you stay consistent. We also are going to have delta Vs. So this is going to be a change in V, which is the same as any change, V final minus V initial. And we're also going to have an average velocity, which we know is the average of two numbers, is the V initial, V final over two. So these are all the different Vs that we're gonna see throughout the year. And we have to understand what they, each one of these means and how they are different. So when I say that V is the variable, there are going to be other Vs and kinds of Vs and subscripts that I put in their place. Sometimes people write, instead of V bar, you might see somebody write V average. That's okay. Not that big of a deal. Like I said, as long as you're consistent and you know what you're talking about. Now, the unit for speed is going to be meters per second. All right, now, by meters per second, I'm just going to write this as meters per second. And that tells us a lot about the formula for speed, because like I said, it is some distance by some per unit of time. So when I write the definition for average speed, I say that the average speed is equal to the change of position over T. And a major, major mistake that I see is back to this chart. Guys, if there are two speeds, if the speed changes, meaning there is a final velocity and initial velocity, this must be rewritten as V1 plus V2, or V initial V final over two, equals X over T. So generally, I only use this formula if my speed is constant. If speed is constant, yes, you could throw that speed in there because if it's moving one meter per second, then one meter per second, and then one meter per second, the average obviously is one meter per second. And as we know from other videos, you might see this also, the X's and displacement and distances. Sometimes you can see them as D, but in this case, I'm just gonna write them as X. That's what I'm most comfortable with. And when the speed is constant, we refer to this as uniform motion. So every once in a while you hear them say, a cart is moving in uniform motion, you know that it has a constant speed. And a great example of speed and how I remember this, speed starts with the S, so does scalar. And a great example of this is just your speedometer in your car. Now here in the US, we would say 50 miles per hour, but this does not give us any direction, it just gives us a magnitude and its unit. So we might say for a speedometer somewhere else that uses the metric system, that a speedometer tells me that a car is going 35 meters per second. But now what happens when there is going to be a direction associated? What is the vector quantity for speed? Well, the vector quantity for speed is velocity. And we see, guys, it doesn't get much easier than this. Velocity is a vector VV, speed scalar SS. Now the thing is, they have exactly the same units and exactly the same variables. So when I write this, I can say that this is average speed or average velocity depending on if this is average distance or displacement. So distance is going to play with speed 
displacement is going to play with velocity. So if I wrote this, I would say that the average speed is equal to the distance over time. But I can say the exact same thing and write the exact same thing by saying that the average velocity is equal to the displacement over time. So these play together and it depends. We have to keep our scalars with our scalars and our vectors with our vectors. And you'll see that in a second in the examples that I want to show you. Now, because it's a vector and direction is important, velocity can be positive or negative. And a lot of times students don't understand what a negative velocity means. To show you what a negative velocity means, I want to show you it on a graph. Now, the problem is in physics, a lot of the times I'm not going to give you numbers. We just know that this is the positive quadrant of the y-axis. So we'll say this is velocity. It has a unit of meters per second. We always label our axes. And this is going to be time and it has a unit of s. We know that this, that's not an x, this is a positive quadrant. So everything up here is positive. If this is zero, all of these numbers are positive. And you guys know that you've used number lines and you used graphs before. And everything here is going to be negative. So maybe this is two, four, six, eight. And right here is minus two, minus four, minus six, and minus eight. So now understanding these graphs, what we have to look at is if I were to draw a slope here and I said, we'll go from here all the way down to here, I would ask you to describe this in terms of positive and negative. Well, what ha what's happening to the speed? Well, what's happening to the velocity? Velocity is decreasing. We see that it's going eight, six, all the way down to zero, but the entire time it's moving forward and the entire time it is a positive velocity. So you can have a positive velocity with a decreasing velocity. So velocity can go down, but it still be positive. That seems to be very counterintuitive for students sometimes. An example of this is as you approach a stoplight, if this is a car, yeah, look at that car, and over here is a stoplight. As you're going eight meters per second, you slow to zero meters per second. Boop, 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 boop stop. But this entire time, you're still moving forward. So a positive velocity means you're moving forward. But now, let's say I continued down this way. Well, now we have an initial velocity equal to zero. And down here, we have a V final equal to minus 8 meters per second. Now, minus in physics does not mean smaller. Negative in physics means opposite. So for this car, the velocity is increasing. It started at zero and it got bigger and bigger and bigger, but it's moving backwards. Because it's moving backwards, it has a negative sign in front of it. So in this case, it would be the car comes to a stop, sees the ex-girlfriend over here running at you. You put it in reverse and you are going back the other way this way. I'm out of here. I don't want to be here. Another great example of this, and it's something that's very, very common in physics if I throw a ball upward into the air, it goes up, it reaches max height, it stops, and it comes right back down. That's this graph right here. I start, I throw it up, it starts with some initial speed of 8 meters per second. It goes up, but it decreases in speed till it gets to max height at 0 meters per second. Then it turns around and goes back down here, and right back here it has a minus 8 meters per second but it's just going in the opposite direction. So you have to understand that velocity can be positive or negative, but that does not mean that slowing down or speeding up, right? Positive and negatives for velocity, not slowing down and speeding up. Positive and negatives are in fact backwards and forwards. Let's take a look at two examples. Some weirdos like to run. So here's going to be the start line and the finish line of one loop around this track. Now one loop will say this, one loop is 400 meters. Now, if I say that a runner can run around this track in one minute and 18 seconds, let's say. So T for one loop. My runner's out there going, it's so slow. It's the slowest runner ever. Well, what if I told you they were 90? Now they sound really fast. Life is perspective. So now I can ask, what is the average speed and the average velocity? And if you're working at home and you're learning, maybe this is a good time. Pause the video. Tell me what the average speed and the average velocity for this runner is. And the beautiful thing is they're both the same exact equation. But as we said before, speed deals with distance. 
velocity deals with displacement. So as they went around, they went boop, 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 so fast. Look at me. Home stretch. Let's do this. They went 400 meters, and they did so in 78 seconds. We had to convert that minutes because we don't use minutes in physics because we need meters per second. So it turns out that they had an average speed of 5.1 meters per second. But now if we look over here, what is the distance from the start to the finish? Well, that's zero. So what's the average velocity of this runner? Students hate that. They hate that they can run for a minute and 18 seconds, but their average velocity, zero. This is more intuitive thinking. So in this example, I want to know, is it possible to move at a constant speed but a non-constant velocity? Explain your answer. And can you move at a constant velocity but not a but a non-constant speed? So think about that. Pause the video. Think what you'd answer. Here comes the answer. For the first one, the question is, the answer is yes, right? Because you can move at a constant speed, but a constant velocity has to do with direction. So if I change the direction, my velocity is going to change, but I can move at a constant speed. Here's an example. A car I'm driving at 25 meters per second goes around a bend. So the car, the speed is 25 meters per second on a straight line and around the bend. But around the bend changes... The direction and velocity is a vector direction depends so if I change the direction I have changed the velocity we're in the second case the answer is no because velocity is equal to speed plus direction so if this is constant that would mean that the speed has to stay constant and the direction has to stay constant as well so I cannot move at a constant velocity but change the speed because that would in turn change the velocity as well. If you have any questions, guys, leave them down in the comments below. I promise I'll get to them. I, if you want to subscribe, I'll put it over here. Maybe I'll put it over here. There will be some other playlists. This will be like the kinematics playlist, and this will be some other playlist that you might want to do. Maybe I'll do it over here or over here. Until I see you guys in the next ones, guys, stay positive out there. Work really, really hard. Always be kind to other people. I'll catch you on the next one.